I'm Greg Tidwell. Thank you for joining me for this series of lessons on God's plumb line. We're using as our theme passage, Amos chapter seven, verses seven and eight. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. As we consider this, we see that God is revealed as a builder. In the passage in Amos, he's building a wall. But throughout the Bible, his work as a builder is serves as a picture of God building his people. The spiritual temple described in the book of Ezekiel is an example of this. Now, in the days of Ezekiel, the uh, original temple, Solomon's temple, had been destroyed, and there would be a second temple constructed but in the prophecies of Ezekiel, the spiritual temple that is described was not merely the second temple of Judaism, but rather serves as a template, as a spiritual guide to the Lord's church. Ezekiel 42 verse 20 says, he measured it on the four sides. It had a wall around it, 500 cubits long and 500 cubits broad, to make a separation between the holy and the common. The separation between the holy and the common is an important thing to remember in terms of the Lord's church, because the Lord's church is a spiritual temple. The church is God's building, and being in the church is different from being out of the church. As opposed to the broad world, the narrow way, the way of faith in Christ, leads to holiness. 1 Peter 2, verses 4 and 5 read, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. The same idea is dealt with by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning in verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The church is God's building. He is the one who is building it up. Christ is the cornerstone, the one around which everything will flow. And we find that Christ himself speaks to us through scripture. There is a foundation of scripture which guides the building of the church. The foundation of the prophets and the apostles, in other words, of God's authoritative spokesman. The scriptural foundation of the church guides everything, and we find it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring the church into being a holy temple. That is to say, it belongs to God, and for that reason, it needs to be held to a high standard. The standard can be seen in the Lord's plumb line. A plumb line is used in the construction of a building to make sure that walls are straight, 
that they aren't leaning one way or another, that the building is being constructed according to the appropriate pattern. And so it is, the Lord's plumb line is in his very nature, a reflection of his perfection. God's absolute perfection serves as the standard. Now, in the course of our study and future lessons, we're going to look at the way that God uses various things to serve as a guide, as a plumb line for us, to keep us accountable. But all of these, all standards, if they are true standards, will lead back to God's absolute perfection. The standard God is using is his own holiness. In 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, we read, As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. God uses himself as a standard. God says, judge me, judge yourself. You look to God and you see perfection, and you look to yourself and you see the ways in which you have fallen short of perfection. The standard is God's holiness. We never will be perfectly holy, at least not in this life. But God calls us to holiness. He gives us a standard. This is a standard, furthermore, that we can use more broadly because God's judgment is impartial. Peter continues in verse 17 If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. God is impartial. God does not play favorites, but rather everyone comes before God in the same way. Because of this, God's holiness provides the standard against which we can judge the world, because everyone is accountable to God's standard. We deal with this question of of judging, and the fundamental question is, how can we judge the world when we are sinners? Well, that would be a fair question if I were judging the world according to my preferences, according to myself as the standard. Because if I ask the world, are you as good as I am? Well, in many ways, most people could look at me and say, well, I'm, I'm better than he is. But the standard is not ourselves. The standard is God. And God is perfect. We can judge the world because of the holiness of God. In Isaiah 28, verse 17, the Lord says, and I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and waters will overwhelm the shelter. A refuge of lies. That's a wonderful way of describing the secular world in which we live. A world that has forgotten God, a world that is built on lies. But God's righteousness is a plumb line. It's a standard. And by that standard, the world can be judged. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, this standard is seen to be part of the work of the coming Messiah. We read, For whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which range through the whole earth. In this prophecy, we see that the plumb line 
represents God's eyes. God sees everything. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. No one can escape from his judgment. But what of Zerubbabel? Zerubbabel is a prophecy of Christ. He is one of the figures that we find in the Old Testament who serve as a picture of Jesus. Now, sometimes this picture is lived out, and sometimes it is symbolic. In this instance, it is a symbol, it is a vision of Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel, in other words, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the one holding the plumb line. He is the one who executes judgment, and he is the standard of judgment. Those who are right with God through Jesus Christ will pass. Those who are not right with God through Jesus Christ will fail. It is Jesus Christ who is the standard. God's plumb line judges his people, not merely judging the world, but we ourselves are accountable to God. We see this clearly in the Old Testament where God's people are repeatedly held to a standard and punished when they fall short. In 2 Kings 21, verse 13, we read, and I will stretch over Jerusalem the measuring line of Samaria and the plumb line of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes the dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. The judgment against Jerusalem, the city of God, the place of the holy temple. And yet it would be judged by the same judgment that had come against Samaria, against the house of Ahab, the plumb line of God's judgment. Amos 7, 7 and 8. This is what he showed me. Behold, the Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, I'm setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass by them. Notice that the wall was built with a plumb line, but the Lord was standing by it with a plumb line. In other words, it's not enough to start well. You must continue, and you will be judged on the basis of your starting, of the foundation. What is our foundation? It's Jesus Christ, and the will of God is revealed in Scripture. That serves as the ultimate plumb line. On that basis, we are all accountable to God. In coming lessons, we're going to look at various ways in which God provides for us methods of, of looking at ourselves, of assessing ourselves. We see that God has reached out to us through many ways. And in each of these ways, his own perfection is seen. God's holiness is behind it all, and as we come to know the God who is holy, we ourselves can be better as we apply that standard, that plumb line, and bring our lives into alignment with it. This is Greg Tidwell. Thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to being with you again in our future lessons. <music>